Uh, Doc had a very unusual experience with this this morning. She did not expect this thing to work. And she sat down on the thing. Boy, did she have herself a jolt. I'll get her to tell you about it if I can see her somewhere. There she is. Um, let her sit for a second. Doc, come sit here and just tell them about your experience just for a moment. We're Yes, all of it. And I'm going to take a little break from Mama So's Claude while you tell him about this. Go ahead and see. Okay, so it was about 4.15 this morning. And EJ was asking me to sit in this chair here, except it was over there. Um, we'd been wondering um, some things, and so I said, okay, why don't you do this? And he told me how to hold the things, and you know, and then he left. And honestly, I didn't think anything much was going to happen. Um, I put myself into a deep relaxed state and it takes me about three or four breaths to do that and I was sitting there you know quietly relaxed and all of a sudden this um, being appeared there this woman she was about a meter and a half off the ground at first and about five feet tall um, looked like an old woman. Um, the word that came to mind was banshee, even though I don't really know what that is. Um, wasn't really a witch. It wasn't really a hag. She was wearing, um, well, I guess maybe at some point they were white clothes, but they looked like more like grayish, beigeish clothes. The hair was white, but only till here. It wasn't very long. And for some reason, I started crying. By that, I mean tears just rolled down my face. Not that many, just a few. And I was like, okay, what's this about? So I watched her move. Um, and as you know, she was in a forest setting. Uh, I'm like, okay, so there is this being, and it's being pulled in. And in the meantime, there had been some shivers every now and then, and my hands are a little tingly from holding these crystals. Um, a little time goes by, maybe a half a minute. Um, I watch her, and next thing I know, I'm looking over my shoulder. I mean, she's gone. I'm looking over my shoulder, and I, and, and I am it. Like the, I'm looking over it, and it, it has that same gray thing. I'm looking down my legs and it's the it, it's the um the this this dress or whatever I can't even see my feet but I can see the forest floor um the sense I got is that she makes strange noises or that she's you know the sounds she would make are not necessarily pleasant to listen to um there was um the sense that I could make those sounds, and, but if I would, people would freak out for sure. Um, in, a, in, in a kind of way, it's, um, it, it was like, well, you know, well, that's what it was anyway. And then uh, some distraction happened around here, and then the intensity of feeling that as me was kind of a little bit more gone. And so a little while later, EJ comes out and I tell him, you know, and then it's like, well, is it over? Is it not? You know, and we decide, well, um, let me just sit here a little longer. Um, couldn't really get the intensity of the, oh my God, this, she's really me. Um, that was an amazing shift where at first I saw her and then I was her. And she was in she was in me. You know, I'm not really necessarily fond of banshees because I went online afterwards and looked it up, and it's like, oh my god, you know. But uh, for some reason, that must be one of my selves somewhere. 
Um, she knew about potions and all kinds, all things of the forest. She does not really communicate with the so-called alive people, like humans, all that much, uh, but communicates with the um, with the beings from the spirit world much more easily, and that's that's where she's home. Um, what else is there to say? Well, at some point it was just like, okay, this is it. And the whole thing didn't last more than, at the most, maybe five minutes, five, ten. I mean, it, 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 it didn't, maybe ten minutes at the most. So, I'm think, looking at the thing, I'm like, hmm. I didn't think much was going to happen except maybe some stuff that happens when I get into physical relaxation. But um, it's possible that if you're not used to this kind of thing, or if you have no experience with disembodied beings, I, it could freak somebody out to have that kind of experience. Um, and uh, an experienced guide at that point might be very useful. So, okay, I think I'm done. Okay. Thank you for sharing that. That was very interesting. I watched it from in my office there. Um, I appreciate that very much. That was uh, that was very interesting. Remember, you're not voyaging anywhere. You're actually pulling something in, rather than going there. You're pulling it into you. Yet it feels like you're there. It feels as if you're there with the swamp woman. Yeah. Um, so as you pull yourselves in, you own them. Uh, now you're gonna you're gonna sit on this and hold these probes until justification. Justification is that point at which it becomes uh, completely Meisnerized, which we'll talk about becomes Meisnerized, justified, and assimilated, and um, uh, balanced, and harmonized, and, um, uh, as well, assimilated, actually, is what I mean to say. The fact that it worked the way it did um, is a little mind-blowing, really. It turns out that the integration process actually continues um, or at least in this case, is still continuing. Um, it's um, mind-boggling that this would come up, and it adds a depth of understanding that I just couldn't have had before. How the pulling in of that particular uh, alternate universe persona or personality is going to affect the homeworld um, personality or persona that is having to function here. Um, how that will really affect it uh, remains to be seen. Uh, one of the qualities of this what we call swamp woman is that she's incredibly peaceful. Um, there are other qualities also, and uh, I think this integration process is just not easy.